there, it's Fanny. Welcome to my review of um, this book, Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass. It is the second book in a series that I started reading about half a year ago, maybe? And the second book in the Crown of Glass series, Throne of Glass series. And um, I, I'm sorry about the bad lighting in here. Uh, it's... <laughs> Um, the sun is setting, so I had to pull down the um, the blinders, the blinds. But I don't like how that looks. But otherwise, like half my face would be lit, and it's just <sighs> what are you gonna do? I'll try to invest in, in better lighting um, as, as this channel grows. There might be spoilers. Uh, I'll try to keep everything pretty vague, but. Like, on the whole, the spoilers that I will give are pretty obvious and you sort of understand that from the, f the first book of the series that things are going to evolve in this way. And let's get started. So in summary, uh, this book, obviously, since it's the second in a series, uh, it builds well on what we already learned in the first book. And you wouldn't really expect the second book in the young adult series maybe to stand well on its own, but I think actually this one does. Um, it's almost worth reading the first book just so you can get to this one, because a lot of the things you're kind of wondering about in the first book at least get addressed. Even if not everything is resolved, at least you kind of get an idea of what's going on. So, uh, after winning the tournament in the first book, um, Selena, the main character, becomes the um, assassin of the King Ar of Argalon. And <laughs> this is a little bit problematic because it turns out he has a history with her family which uh, explains why she's so afraid of him and she doesn't really want him to find out who she really is. And obviously this progresses and it gets more and more complicated as time goes on. Their relationships between the characters also evolve. Um, and I think this is one of the more uh, an important volume in the series for sort of setting the tone for the different relationships. And I really like the dynamic between you know, the love triangle, it's uh, Selena, it's Kale, the captain of the guard, and um, the crown prince, uh, Prince Dorian. Like, Dorian and Selena in the previous book were in a relationship and then she broke it off. And in this book, she and Kale sort of realize their feelings for each other and they get together. And Dorian has to deal with letting go of Selena and at the same time, Kale has to sort of fight, he's torn between his loyalty that he has to keep for the royal family and his love for Selena. So that's compli that complicates things and he doesn't actually want to start the relationship with her because of that, because he realizes like how important she will become to him. And she does, and it does complicate things, um, which is, well, it's predictable, but it's very cute. Um, their relationship isn't, it doesn't stay cute, so I really like that. There's a lot of dynamics. <laughs> One frustrating thing, though, is that she seems to not be able to be on good standing with both the guys at the same time, so there's a lot of, like, she can't speak to this guy now, so she has to speak to the other one. And Dorian is a dear friend of hers, so like that's not a problem. Like she always has someone to speak to, but it's sometimes a little bit frustrating because <laughs> the the person who needs information doesn't get it, and the other way around. So the tur there turns out to be things about Selena that definitely complicate things with Kale and also with Dorian, obviously. Um, and it's I, I still like how their dynamic is and their relationship and how important they are to each other, even though there are these other factors. 
and definitely the friendship between uh, Dorian and Selena is actually really cute. It, it's sweet. Um, so I really like that, that they managed to stay friends even though they previously had a relationship. So there's really no hard feelings there. And I really appreciate that for especially a young adult novel. Like you can show that there doesn't have to be a lot of drama. <laughs> there, there is a little bit, but not like, eh, not too much. In the previous book, there's a character, uh, Princess Nehemia. Um, she's... <laughs> She's the crown princess of the kingdom called Elwi, I think. I don't really know how that's supposed to be pronounced. I think they have a, um, a set of, what's it called, a lexicon at the end of the book. But still, let's say she's the crown princess of Elwi and she's really important for... Uh, she's a very good friend of Selena's and she, she is important to the story. She does help guide Selena to understand her own feelings and to sort of take responsibility for things that she really should have already started taking responsibility for. Prince Dorian's relationship with his father was already strained in the first book and this only gets worse because of things that happened to him in the book and uh, basically things become more and more complicated for all the important characters. Um, also, Kale, you get to know more about his um, uh, relationship to his family and why he's captain of the guard instead of uh, being Lord Westfall. Like, why is he not with his family? And there's some resentment there. Um, and I really like that you get enough um, information about each character's background without it feeling like a complete info dump. And the same is true for basically the entire world that is set in. Um, you get a lot of information about it and I really appreciate how it's delivered. Like it's not like all of a sudden you get all this information. It's sort of pieced together as the characters themselves understand it. And I really appreciate that, that approach. In the start of the book, there's a character that's introduced that is uh, Dorian's cousin. <laughs> and you can tell quite quickly that pretty, pretty much like in the first book where um, Lady Caltain is introduced as okay this is gonna be an antagonist they do the same thing with Dorian's cousin like he's gonna be a problem in this book and he is but there's also like there's more to it and I really appreciate that same with Caltain you will learn more about her and why she was acting the way she was in the the previous book and even more like and even more about her and how she ended up in the situation that she's in uh, and also how she's being used by those who are actually evil and the king there's not much to say about him actually there is a lot to say about him but it would spoil a lot so it just really emphasizes how evil he is by telling them how she how he got all his power and how um, how he controls things uh, it is actually a very good way of making a character seem, seem more and more ominous the more time goes on because in the first book you you realize okay this is a bad king like he he invades other countries he wants more and more power and here you sort of learn that oh it's way worse than i first thought an old friend of selena's is introduced and he's way more complex than uh, you first think when he's introduced and in the way he's introduced. So I really like that character. Um, yeah, I really like him. Uh, Archer Finn. Yeah, those are the characters that I paid any attention to really. Um, Dorian's younger brother is in this one. He's a spoiled brat. He's not a lot of fun. Um, you learn more about the witch kingdoms, which is actually a fascinating story in and of itself and I would really lo love to know more about those obviously comes in future books. So in conclusion, so far this book um, like it's actually worth it like I said to read the first 
book so that you can get to this one because you get so much more exposition in a pleasant way and you get more and more curious about what's going on in the world and she builds it up really well. Um, anything negative about it? Well, some things are a little bit stereotypical and some things you can sort of guess and figure out and sometimes you get things before the characters figure it out and that can be a little bit frustrating waiting for them to catch up but <laughs> other than that it is a very good story um, and I think she's weaving it together very nicely so that concludes my review of The Crown of Midnight and if you'd like to grab a copy <laughs> Why not? I, I'll put Amazon affiliate links down below. I hope you don't mind. And if you'd like to get the book and help out this channel, maybe <laughs> grab it through there. Um, and if you'd like to help out this channel and don't want a book, you can check out my Patreon. That helps as well. Um, if you missed my review of the first book in the series, uh, you can check that out over here. And um, thank you so much for watching. Keep calm and carry on until the next time. Bye.